Um, of course, it has a pitch of its own. And it sounds a little different on um, where the uh, Umspinnung, the wrapping is. Of course, here we have the same phenomena that you have with every string. Uh, it can be played close to the bridge. And that, in that sense, it would be close to the same thing. Bridge phenomena played close to that side. It's also like playing close, a string close to the bridge. Uh, in that instance, especially down here, you can also uh, play it in a way that makes the tailpiece resonate and use that string at the same time. And you can spend about easily two minutes just building a crossfade from the tail piece sound to that, the sound of that uh, string below the bridge. And of course, here again, it's really important what kind of uh, um, uh, bow speed and pressure you use. Uh, um, if I use no pressure, a lot of speed, sounds like this, if I use a lot of pressure and very little speed. And anything in between. So um, I find it uh, fascinating to work with, li with what lies in between these uh, kind of cornerstones of um, those um, uh, pieces. Yeah, so we have the tailpiece thing, um, starts down here, goes up, works with this sound. We actually have different sounds here as well. We have a, This is the basic resonant sound of the tailpiece, but if I play it here and use more pressure, you actually get another undertone from it that you can actually work with both of them and crossfade between them. And, um, then you have uh, um, following will be a few pieces that work a lot with these strings under the bridge. So I build a kind of a intersection that uses these strings and just like I demonstrated different kinds of crossfading of the tailpiece sound and the sound below the bridge strings. You can do that of course on every string. Every string has a different behavior. It's a matter of how much time and energy you want to devote something like. Uh, to something like this. If you can say it's okay, it's just the strings below the bridge, they don't mean anything, or you can say, okay, I'm gonna spend an hour. It's a matter of my focus, how uh, important is it for me, um, those little differences. And I try to build uh, an entire um, uh, music in that pseudo blonde set, at least. I have a lot of different activities outside of that, um, of course, which we may talk about later, but uh, in that kind of music, this is really a central theme, this kind of, uh, examining uh, a sound object and um, yeah so we work uh, down here for a while and um, in the next piece I'm going to use uh, a more um, a mix of different the ricochet sounds as you could call them below the bridge and again of course we have a lot of possibilities here we can use the hair on the wrapping like this, like this, we can use it up here, we can use, we can use a bow bar, we can use a bow with a lot of pressure, very little, and we can go in very erratic movements, creating really... Also, I like to use this kind of, sometimes, techniques that are more like generating things, so I'm, what I'm doing is not aiming at producing a, a simple sound, it's another important part of how I work, is not always, I'm not always aiming at producing one thing. I'm also using a kind of uh, a motion pattern and uh, observe what happens as I use it. And in the, that next section of that set, I use a lot of left hand pizzicato. I start with a cross fade. And the left hand pizzicato is not just um, as you commonly have it in your music, but I use the, a lot of the sound above the stop finger. Of course, you have a, a, a very simple logical behavior. As you short, the shorter you stop the string, this is the same thing that happens here. But it has a completely different sound uh, for various reasons, and um, I combine that with uh, the different pitches that I get from below the bridge. We have. For example, this can make a nice starting point, so I start with a crossfade from um, only this 
sound to a pizzicato sound and then we build a more complex um, piece from that and I use these as sort of harmonic um, bases for different uh, um, uh, passages which I also find interesting because it's not a harmony, it's, it can be different on every bass, a little different, it can actually be different on this bass depending on the weather, it's never uh, the, the exact same tuning and pitch for every instrument, it's a little bit different and uh, I find that also um, uh, interesting to work with. Uh, and then we move of course to the different possibilities we have here, which includes tapping sounds, so we have um, a stop finger a pitch above, Tappings. You can pull it off, you can use two fingers, even open strings. And this is a good example of another kind of um, a little ecosystem or a, a pool of possibilities to work with. <laughs> 